we have breaking news and really, really big news coming out from the Marvel sector. Now, this is something that I honestly, I, I didn't really see coming. To, to I'm just being straightforward. Like, I, I really didn't think this was going to be something that was going to happen, but apparently uh, it is. So, Victoria Alonso, if you guys know who that is, Victoria Alonso is the one that's been around for a very long time within Marvel Studios, and she's the one that's basically been the uh, perpetrator for a lot of the woke garbage, the social justice garbage that's been going on at Marvel. She's had her hands in pretty much everything, and apparently she's reportedly out now, officially. She is going to be out from Marvel Studios, and the rumor is that it has to do with the latest bombing of Ant-Man Quantumania, but I think it's just the combination of the cost cutting, right? So we've seen Marvel being cost cut hardcore by Disney, and uh, it wouldn't surprise me if she's just a collateral damage kind of situation. So it says, Victoria Alonso reportedly out at Marvel Studios after Disney CEO Bob Iger called into, co into question quality issues at Marvel and Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania failed at the box office. So it says, a new report claims that Marvel Studios Vice President Victoria Alonso is no longer part of the company less than a month after the Walt Disney CEO Bob Iger called into question the quality of recent Marvel Studios film and TV series in the most recent film release which was Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania which collapsed at the box office. The Hollywood reporters Boris Kitts and Aaron Couch report Alonzo has exited the company on Friday but the reasons for the exit are unclear. Alonzo joined Marvel Studios in 2006 which is crazy. I mean the fact that she's been with the company that long just is insane as a chief of visual effects in post-production and was a co-producer on 2008's Iron Man. She would go on to co-produce Iron Man 2, Thor, and Captain America the First Avenger before becoming an executive producer on Avengers. Now, you guys got to imagine, to be with the company since 2006, that is a very, very long time. This woman obviously had a lot of influence over what was going on at Marvel, especially in the production sector of Marvel. Now, she was a part of major movies within Marvel Studios, obviously. Iron Man, Iron Man 2, Thor, and Captain America, the first Avenger. Those are all big movies. And on top of the actual Avengers movie, those are all big movies to be a part of. So to say that she had minor influence would be a lie. She obviously had major, major influence over how the movies were made and over a production of the movies. So is it shocking to think that the one who is so for SJW and social justice nonsense, like this woman was, would be the one to try to start all of this and, and kind of put it into all the movies over the last phase four phase five and whatnot it wouldn't surprise me at all that she had that level of power and influence it says in 2001 she had recently been promoted to president of physical and post-production visual effects and animation production alonzo's exit comes as marvel studios most recent release ant-man and the wasp quantumania collapsed at the box office according to the numbers the film has only so far grossed 205 million dollars domestically and 256 million internationally for a global growth of 462 million dollars this past weekend the film only grossed a little a little over 4 million domestically it also played in 455 less theaters given its current trajectory it's unlikely the film would top the adjusted unadjusted totals for ant-man and the wasp that film grossed 216 million domestically and 406 million international for a 623 million dollar total now we covered this before in a video uh talking about ant-man and the wasp quantumania and the fact that it's struggling to even beat the original ant-man's numbers when you adjust for inflation it's really quite sad what's happening with Ant-Man. Um, again, I don't think Ant-Man was the movie to introduce Kang. I think Kang should have been introduced at some point in some more serious characters movie because Ant-Man is just not it. As much as Ant-Man is a cool character, I just don't consider him a high-tier superhero that can draw that kind of a crowd. Uh, so ultimately, Kang is going to fall on deaf ears. I wouldn't even be surprised if they come out with another movie where Kang is in it and that movie gets viewed twice as much as Ant-Man because nobody wanted to go see Ant-Man and people go and see that movie and they're like who is this guy because they have no idea because they didn't watch Ant-Man so it, it just wasn't that great of a start to phase five I think they probably should have ended phase four with it I think that would have made more sense that way by showcasing Kang people can get excited about phase five and see what's going to happen with Kang and eventually they're going to have Avengers Kang's dynasty um I think they should have done that but ultimately Marvel's going to do what Marvel's going to do it says not only does Alonzo's exit come amid one of the worst performing Marvel cinematic universe films to date both at the box office and with audiences but it also comes amid the walt disney company ceo bob Iger calling into question the quality of marvel films and tv series Iger spoke at the recent morgan stanley conference where he said what we have to look at is marvel is not necessarily the volume of marvel storytelling but how many times we can go back to the well on certain characters
He continues, sequels typically work well for us, but do you need a third or a fourth, for instance? Or is it time to turn to other characters? There's nothing in any way inherently off in terms of the Marvel brand. I think we just have to look at what characters and stories we are mining. And if you look at the trajectory of the Marvel over the next five years, you'll see a lot of newness Iger added. Now we're going to turn back to the Avengers franchise, but with a whole set of different Avengers as an example. Now, again, we've also spoken about this as well, and I just don't think the recent announcement of the Marvel's... Um, Avengers lineup is going to be very strong. It's pretty much mainly woman based, if I'm not mistaken, and it's characters that nobody essentially cares about, men and women. Nobody cares about them. With the Avengers, you have to have a really strong lineup, and unfortunately for Marvel, they just don't have that kind of lineup to back it up like they did before. I mean, the original Avengers was such a strong lineup of amazing characters that people not only maybe grew to love but already loved from the beginning iron man especially hulk all that it's just incredible incredible avengers lineup it says Iger then briefly discussed star wars before pointing out to the quality of the films and tv shows being produced under disney's big brands they do need to stop though they need to stop with the volume they need to stop with the volume and focus on quality. Marvel tried to do too much too fast. That's the problem. With their phase four, not only were they doing movies, but they were trying to pump out as many TV shows as they possibly can. And that's what eventually led to them having such terrible quality. Not only that, they spread themselves too thin financially. And I'm sure that started to affect their TV shows, especially because their movies took a lot of the budget. So if they have a particular budget to produce XYZ amount of content, they're going to obviously focus on the movies because that's what's going to make them the most money. They're TV shows are going to play second fiddle and they're not going to get as much of a budget. We saw that with She-Hulk and how much that was unfortunately put on the back burner in terms of CGI quality because it's pretty obvious how terrible She-Hulk looked overall and it just never got better. Like I thought maybe, okay, maybe it'll get better towards the end. I don't really know the beginning. Maybe they just had trouble trying to figure out how to animate her, but ultimately she looked so terrible. It was so, so bad. And the funny thing is she was still an expensive character. Even after all the nerfing of the budget and everything, she still cost them a ton of money. So imagine how much it would have cost her to do her right. But of course, they're not going to do it right because they don't have to, right? They think they have all the people in the world who are going to support them, whether the product is good or bad. But I think they're slowly starting to realize they don't have that. They're starting to realize that they just don't have that level of clout anymore. Nobody really cares about Marvel so much after this Phase 4. They lost a massive amount of viewership. Now, do they still have enough viewership to make money? Absolutely they do. There's no doubt about it. But the problem is they're not making money. They're not utilizing the fan base that they have left. And they're providing subpar content that people are just not interested in seeing. So they really need to get their shit together and put out something that's going to get people excited again otherwise they're going to start to realize just how little they have left overall in terms of a fan base right now they have the hardcore people they have the stands and they know those people are going to stick around no matter what but they are starting to dwindle little by little to the point where they're going to be heavily in trouble if they cannot keep the current fans that they have interested in their product so anyway guys thank you so much for watching this video i hope you did enjoy and if you did consider leaving me a subscribe i would greatly appreciate it don't forget to like the video comment let me know what you thought and i'll see you guys on the next one hypnotic out